All right, what's going on, boys? My name is Quake V. Welcome back to the channel. Now, today, the long awaited season six patch notes are here. Or here are here and uh, we're gonna go over them today you guys really like the last kind of patch notes overview I did where I you know I'll go over the patch notes with you guys and I'll just kind of give you my thoughts on how this affects apex how this affects high level ranks and stuff like that so um yeah let's get into these patch notes a lot of good stuff in these patch notes I kind of glossed over them just to kind of you know get my ideas get my thoughts together for this video but uh, I'm gonna go over them right now and really just go into each one in depth and yeah, we're going to see what's changing with the season. So let's start. First, we got map update for World's Edge. Um, so basically, they are changing a lot of things. I'm not going to go into the exact map update. If you do want to go into everything or every little detail of the map update, everything is all on their website. I'll link their website down below. Um, but yeah, they're changing a lot of things to World's Edge. We're not getting uh, Olympus this season, sadly, which I wanted. I think a lot of other people wanted to, but it's fine. These map updates seem really good for um, competitive and um, just making your games more fun. So yeah um yeah the new legend rampart which um i kind of go more into her abilities here i believe um see we have her passive rampart has increased magazine capacity and faster reloads when using lmg's minigun modded a loader also increases the amount of shots before overheating occurs and improves cooling when using l star i actually forgot about the l star when they said it improves our reload like these buffs go to the lmg's i forgot the l star was an lmg so yeah the l star it's gonna be interesting using this weapon with uh with rampart here that's for sure especially the devotion the devotion is gonna be nuts dude that's all i'm saying but we'll get to that a little later on tactical amp cover ramp rampart builds a cover builds a crouch cover wall i can't read today plays a full cover amp wall that blocks incoming shots and amps outgoing shots she can put down five amp walls at a time that is insane we saw three in the trailers you can put down the max of five we have her minigun that anyone can use, high ammo capacity, long reload time, and she can put down three of these? I didn't even know that. She can put down three miniguns at the same time. Imagine a whole team of people being on miniguns behind shields. I wonder if you can put a shield in front of a shield too, so you have like two double shields and like, you know what I mean? Like, how does that work? Can you like multiply the damage by putting shields in front of each other? I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, Rampart seems sick, man. I'm, I'm really hyped to actually try her. Now we have the new gun of all SMG, which is probably the thing I'm most excited about. I love weapons that are controllable, like weapons that, um, you know, basically assault rifles and, and SMGs like the R99, like things that are very controlled, the, 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 you know, kind of strike speeds quick so you can move freely with these weapons and they don't have a lot of recoil. And the Volt SMG is just that. Um, and this is going to be kind of replacing the R99 because if you didn't see from last video, there was a lot of speculation that the R99 is going to go into the supply crates, which, um, spoiler, it is. Uh, we're going to get into that a little later in these patch notes. But yeah, so the Volt SMG, I think, is going to be taking over the meta and I think taking the place of the R99. As long as the damage isn't too bad, it shouldn't be. But um, from what we've seen, it definitely has good stability, just like the R99. And I think it might even be a little bit better at medium range than the R99 was. So yeah. And it's an energy based SMG. <clears throat> now, this is the crafting system that has been uh, in, the, in the gameplay trailer for season six. It was uh, kind of got a glimpse at it. And so I was kind of wondering how, where you get the materials for this crafting system. And it does say that you get these materials from um, around the map. So if you look around the map, you'll actually find these kind of uh, crafting materials that you can pick up for this crafting system. And you can use those crafting materials on the crafting system and get you know whatever is in there like in the trailer you saw you can literally get a devotion you can actually upgrade your evo armor which is a big thing with evo armor that we're getting into right now speaking of evo armor here we go this is huge this is something that people have been asking for for a long time ever since evo armor was released the armor system in apex has always made early games kind of feel very odd because you know you'd pick up you sometimes now you can find an armor your opponent would have a purple armor and it's like that they have 100 more hp that fight feels unwinnable it's not fair cool thing about this is now you will always have an armor so let's just get into this this is big all armor in the game is evo except gold armor so gold armor is still in the game but every single armor is evo now boom when you find a white blue or purple armor on the ground it's pre-leveled evo armor so there's still blue white and purple armor but it's pre-leveled evo so instead of a purple regular purple armor it's a purple evo armor um, that you can continue to level up to red if you would want to same with the blue and white and all that Gold armor is not part of the Evo armor track, only found in rare locations as usual, so gold armor is still the same. Another interesting change is that players spawn with level 0 Evo armor. This is also another huge thing that everyone's been asking for, like just let us spawn with an Evo armor or a white shield. 
and here we got it so now everyone this takes this this is huge for me because early game it was so annoying it was it feels like if i didn't have an armor i just like i couldn't fight and now no matter what you spawn with an evil armor that if you put damage in boom it levels up and that's really nice so um yeah i'm not sure what level zero is i'm guessing that just means no armor and you just have to put in a certain amount of damage and then boom it goes up to level one or white um but yeah <clears throat> and you can continue to take that base armor that you get off spawn all the way to red we think this will really help with loot availability in the early game i think though too without requiring players to drop hot when they don't want to with all these changes in the season six players now have the opportunity to level up their shields through damage luck and ground loot or through crafting so there's a lot of different ways to get better shields now which is great i think for the game the last big difference which just is huge um this has to do with time to kill in video games and, and time to kill is a very hard thing to balance and i think apex legends has done a great job actually but I think that a lot of people realize that 225 health with the red armor and other things like, you know, Gibby's fortification passive, his arm shield, it's all stacks up and just makes people just too, it, it increases that time to kill too much. People take too long to kill. It kind of ruins the pacing of the fights. So basically what they did is they reduced all armor by 25 HP. So that means that every single armor is now reduced by 25 HP. So white armor starts with 25 health. Blue armor starts with 50. Um, purple, 75 and then red is the only armor in the game that can now give you a hundred more armor, right? So um, yeah, big change and I think it's definitely good for the game. And um, gold armor also gives 75 extra armor if you're wondering, same as purple. Um, new damage requirements. I'm not sure if these were lower or higher than what Evo used to be, but these are definitely not hard. Doing 250 damage is very easy. So if you were to get a, you know, you could literally, since you get an Evo armor off drop, you could do 250 damage so easily, like in a singular fight, not even a sing just like a half a fight, honestly, if it's kind of like a poke fight and instantly, boom, purple armor. And I think this is great for the game because um, I think R having RNG dictate how much HP you have in a gunfight is really annoying. So now you have a lot more control over that, which I like. So um, yeah, and then damage to red is 500 to get to that last kind of level of, uh, of armor. Now, last we have these, not last, sorry, I don't know why I said last, hollow sprays are coming. These are really sick. I thought these were going to be just kind of normal sprays, but you actually throw down this little device and it kind of pops up. And um, I like these a lot, actually. I'm going to use these a lot for just BMing my enemies, you know, down them, throw it in front of them. It's really funny, man. These are awesome. Love them. Um, and there's going to be obviously sprays for every legend, stuff like that. I hope there's like get good sprays or like get shit on sprays, stuff like, you know, <laughs> like, like BM sprays like that. Now we have the battle pass. Uh, the battle pass is looking really good there's also a trailer on that if you guys want to go watch that um it's on the apex on youtube channel and it should be on their site which again i'm looking down below if you want to see all of this there's a battle pass trailer out um and we are getting the uh, reactive g7 scout skin for the battle pass uh and the bloodhound and road warrior skin which is the bloodhound skin that everyone's hyped about including me um so yeah uh new quest coming awesome I think I'm actually going to play the quest this season. Um, I think that was one of the reasons I was really burnt out with season five is because I didn't play any of the quests. So I think I'm actually going to be doing the quest. And um, instead of just text now, there's actually full color illustrated comics at the end of the quest, which is cool. So I'm hyped for that. Make it a little more fun. Um, legends. So now we're getting to the legend changes. I know this is a long, I know this is pretty long. I apologize, but I do want to go over all this and give you guys all my thoughts. So um, yeah. So they kind of talk about the, they're really going to focus on the recon characters like Pathfinder, Crypto, and Bloodhound. Um, and they want to buff them. They also said there's a bug with Crypto having a hidden advantage. You guys probably realize this. Sometimes when you thought you were hitting Crypto's drone, you were really hit, not, you weren't really hitting the drone. So a lot of times you're shooting the drone and it looks like you were hitting it, but it wasn't dying. You're like, how does this thing have so much HP? You just weren't actually hitting it. So the, uh, they fixed that, but yeah, so here we are recon class. So now all recon legends, if you guys were keeping up with like leaks in the game, um, you know that this is something that was leaked a while ago can now use survey beacons. So bloodhound crypto and pathfinder can use survey beacons. One thing is this makes pathfinder even more useless than he already is. <laughs> I know a lot of people want a pathfinder buff after his gr huge grapple nerf from, uh, from last season or the last event that we had. Uh, giving all recon legends access to survey beacons makes Pathfinder less unique. Yep. So what they're doing is they are, he has a new passive. Each time Pathfinder scans a survey beacon, the total cooldown of the zipline gun, which is his ultimate, is reduced. So basically every time he uses a survey beacon, he gets an ulti accelerant used. 
um, number zipline gun cooldown so his ultimate is reduced by 10 seconds each time he scans a beacon up to six rings per game he's a total cooldown zipline gun could down to 120 seconds to six seconds now i'm pretty sure what this means is 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 um it's not just for one use it's not just it it's not like an ulti excel where it just speeds it up for one ultimate i'm pretty sure each time you use it it makes the overall cooldown for the rest of the match go down by 10 seconds so you can literally make your ultimate be 60 seconds for the rest of the match if you hit all six survey beacons which i think a lot of people miss that and i think that's actually gonna make pathfinder really good for competitive constantly having zip lines to rotate around the map um i think a lot of people are thinking he's really bad right now i think he's actually not that bad and especially with this change um i think he's gonna be pretty good and it, it, maybe all the pro players are saying for competitive you know for pro for professional play he's not as good understandable but i don't talk about that i talk about what everyone plays in the game so ranked mode just pubs you know normal stuff not pro play because most of us aren't playing in professional i think in, in even high level of ranked he's actually gonna be pretty good having those constant zip lines bloodhound now i think honestly it's the bloodhound meta dude this is the bloodhound meta there's no way it's not man this is like bloodhound's been buffed so much man since apex has been released and i think this is the final buff that's really gonna just set him into stone into the meta which i like because i actually love bloodhound i love his heirloom um if you guys have been watching my streams which if you haven't link in the description for that but i've been using bloodhound anytime my wraith is taken i just love his heirloom and i just love his kit it's very fun beast of the hunt now gains even more duration of bloodhound scores a knockdown or kill sick um i the all father this is gonna be so annoying <laughs> i'm not gonna lie he gets his scan twice as fast when he is using his ultimate so basically when he's in they say right here and while he's using his ultimate his scan now goes from 25 seconds which is normal to six seconds every six seconds that you're in your ultimate you can scan you know how insane that is that is insane i have the all father total use time during beast of the hunt 1.8 seconds to 0.9 seconds don't know exactly what that means but um, maybe you guys do beast of the hunt duration uh extension from five seconds to 15 seconds does that mean that every i think this means that every knockdown instead of getting five more seconds added you have 15 more seconds added but like i said bloodhound is insane now and with his new skin and his heirloom by the way his skin matches an heirloom they're both black and red i'm gonna be i might be a bloodhound main this season not even gonna lie might be um crypto crypto uh he's not looking good Crypto is a particularly interesting recon character. The amount of information he can gather for his team with his drone is very high, but the fact that he has to switch over to his drone leaves him vulnerable and often not a reason for his team. Because he has no abilities without his drone, we figure there's room for even more power when he's in his drone. Okay, surveillance drone. Crypto can now activate respawn and survey beacons. So Crypto can now respawn teammates with his drone, which is big for ranked. Um, you can also... So that basically you can reach my team without putting yourself, you know, out in the open, which is dope. And he also used survey beacons with this drone, which is also big. Uh, made the surveillance drone slightly more consistent to hit, but also doubled its hit points. So it was easier to hit his crypto EMP, his crypto drone, but it also has more HP now. Drone EMP. So this is the bad thing. So is EMP is really what made crypto viable, to be honest, at least in high level rank. Like, like I said, I'm not talking about professional play here. Um, there's a lot of pro players who will talk about that. For me, I'm just talking about ranked mode, high level ranked, and just pubs. Um, in high level ranked, what made him good was his EMP. And um, now his EMP will slow teammates caught in the blast. So basically, you can't push with crypto EMPs anymore because if you're not already in the radius when the EMP is happening, by the time you get to them, like if you were to wait outside of the EMP radius and then push in on the team, they would already be full HP by the time you got there, realistically. So um, you really can't do EMP pushes anymore. And obviously, you can, as I said, you can't use Revenant's Death Totem either. You um the only, the only thing that might be a strat is using Wraith Portal to counter this. You kind of Wraith Portal right next to the enemy, EMP them, and then your, both your teammates go in right after the EMP goes off. So that's possible, but it's really hard to set up practically. So I don't know how that's going to do. Um, surveillance drone increased from 30 HP, 60 HP, and the hitbox was bigger. Revenant. Revenant obviously is very annoying to a lot of high level comp players and pro players. Um, so they did some changes to him. We're happy to see that dropping the range restriction on Death Totem brought a lot more Revenant into play, but we've been watching a particularly frustrating combo play out in professional play involving a squad of Revenant Raid the Crypto. Everyone hated this 
this comp. We're using the three ultimates together, resulting two back-to-back -back runs at the enemy team that they would do very little about. Yeah, this uh, this combo right here was ridiculous. Basically, what you would do is you would um, portal into a fight, and then you would revenant, and you would crypto alt them, right? So you revenant, you're all in shadows, boom, you guys die. They're they crypto EMP, and you get a lot of damage. If you don't win there, you get TP back to the the crypto alt, and then you go right back to the portal, and you finish them off. It's insane. Like this, it was so broken. So I'm glad they they nerfed this for two seconds after being recalled by Death Totem players. Now you read dimensional rifts. So it's kind of nerfing. Um, this is nerfing that ability to go back to the portal immediately. So uh, you kind of have to wait two seconds before going back to the portal, which gives the enemy team a little bit of time to recover, put down a Gibby Dome, heal, anything like that, run away even. Octane, you can now use a stim while healing, but still will not remove the slow while you incur healing. So Octane really didn't get any changes. So rip Octane mains. <laughs> He's still still in the same spot. I would say Octane's probably the worst legend now. Um so yeah, sorry, Octane mains. Um Loba, she got a nice little buff actually. Black Market it was lowered the cooldown of her ultimate, which is called Black Market, from three minutes to 90 seconds. So you're gonna be getting this a lot more. Um, if they actually fix her bracelet, which has been bugged for the entirety of season five, I think Loba could actually be a pretty decent pick in ranked. So um, yeah, Loba mains should be happy about that. Gibraltar defensive bombardment uh, got nerfed. Gibraltar is still a little bit too strong, so they nerfed him. Um, increased the cooldown of his ultimate from 3 minutes to 4.5 seconds. Bangalore got a buff, which everyone was asking for. Sadly, I don't think it's what people were really looking for. A lot of people are looking for like a rework with Bangalore. Um, but this is something. Decreased cooldown from 4.5 minutes to 3 minutes. Honestly, I think it's very hard to buff Bangalore at the moment or even rework her. Um, so I think this is a fine change for now until maybe the community gathers up some better ideas or respawn gathers up some better ideas. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's a nice little change to Bangler mains. Watson interception pylon. This is pretty crazy. So everyone hates caustic barrels and they've put multiple ways in the game to, you know, change caustic barrels from, you know, having as much as impact as they originally did. First, they made it so that you can actually shoot the caustic barrel for the entirety that it's kind of gassing up, that it's expanding and kill it before you could only shoot the little bottom or you had to wait for it to expand fully and then shoot it. Um, but now you can completely shoot it when it's kind of filling up and it'll just it'll kill it instantly. And Watson's pylon will shoot down caustic barrels if they are in like mid flight, just like they would as ultimate, which is crazy. So I think nice little Watson buff here. And I think uh, this is going to take caustic pretty much out of the high level meta. I think you can still definitely use him, but um, I don't think there's going to be as many people using him at high levels or ranked. Loot. All right. They added energy mags back. They added turbocharger. I hop up back. I'm, pr I'm not sure if that's going to be back on the Havoc or not, but it will be on the Devotion, which is coming back. Extended energy mags are coming back. Let me just tell you right now. Energy weapon meta. The Vault, the Devotion, the Havoc, which is actually buffs to the Havoc that we're going to see in a second here. Energy weapon meta, man. And uh, uh, there's some other, other weapons that are worth speaking about that we're about to get into right now, but... Let me just say the energy weapons are going to be insane. Updated precision choke removed. Precision choke from the loot pool. Great. And now they're just automatically on the triple take and the peacekeeper by default. And you can toggle it on and off. And like I said, R99 is now actually being put into supply drop. Like I said with the last video that I put on the channel, um, a lot of speculation this thing was going to the supply drop. Boom. Now it is. And like I said, I'm a big advocate for this change. I think it's going to make the meta very diverse and it's going to bring a lot of new changes to the game that are needed. Um, now, like every time they put a weapon into supply drop, it has to be a legendary weapon. So they did uh, buff the R9 for it to be a legendary weapon. Damage increased from 11 to 12 per shot. Increased magazine magazine seat. Jesus Christ. Magazine size to 32. Ammo reserve 160. That's not a lot, man. You're going to pick this thing up and run out of ammo real quick. So, um, yeah, but r is the drop now. I kind of wish this was like double this, like 320. That would have been nice. But, um, yeah, r is now a legendary weapon. Devotion clip size reduced back to original values. It's the only thing they did to Devotion. Only thing they did to the Devotion when they put it on the ground is they just reduced the clip size a bit. Devotion's going to be insane. All I'm saying, Devotion behind Rampart Shield with amped bullets, it's gonna be nuts. That's gonna be the meta right there, I'll just tell you. Um, new gold weapons, Devotion, gold weapon, Massive, gold weapon, Triple Take, gold weapon, Flatline, and for my most favorite, the Volt is getting gold. And I'm so, like, I'm actually just so excited to use the Volt. I don't even care if it's bad. As long as it feels good, I am down, dude. I'm gonna use the heck out of this thing. Sniper ammo. 
Uh, this is nice increased pickup from 8 to 12. You get 12 per stack instead of 8. And increase the stack size 16 to 24. Also kind of nice. Um, energy ammo reduce the amount you picked up from 30 to 20. That's dope. Um, Hemlock. Hemlock meta baby. I think that the the energy weapons, at least the the, the, the Volt and the Devotion and the Hemlock are going to be insane this season. Reduce vertical recoil in burst mode already insane though i mean it, depending on how much they reduce their vertical recoil this thing could be like the next havoc of mid-range like when the havoc had no recoil you just beam people at mid-range hemlock it might just be that uh slightly reducing the recoil pattern in second to third shot so first burst kicks less more re more recoil reductions for the hemlock and like i'm saying hemlock burst is going to be insane this thing's going to be a laser burst mode time between burst 0.32 this buffs the fire rate of burst mode. So not only is it going to have a lot less recoil, it's also going to have a higher damage per second. The hemlock is going to be insane. So insane. All I'm saying, man. Hemlock mains. I love the hemlock, by the way. I'm glad it's a, I'm glad it's going to be meta. It's going to be meta. Charge rifle. I'm not, I don't, I don't want this gun to ever be. I just want this gun to be removed, to be honest, but they're buffing it. Uh, when I'll use two ammo per shot, increase max size of four to eight. Actually, I don't even know if this is a buff. It's actually the exact same. So never mind. Um, but yeah, <laughs> triple take buff. This is cool. Increase fire rate from 1.25 to 1.4. Nice. Increase max size from five, five, six, seven, eight to six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, built the chalk up. Built the choke hop up into the weapon by default. Uh, we already went over that. Same with the PK, same thing. Spitfire improved recoil control ability. That's interesting. It means the Spitfire is going to be a little bit easier to uh, beam people with. Havoc. Um, I didn't like the changes to the recoil on the Havoc at all when they made them. Um, so I'm glad they are doing this. Updated Havoc with a new recoil pattern. This is I, this is exactly what they needed to do. The Havoc's existing recoil pattern had a constant horizontal movement, which made it like impossible to shoot people <laughs> unless they were right in front of you. Uh, this means it would either be too difficult to control or if there was too, or there was too much recoil or far too easy to control and there was too little recoil, which we saw both ends of that. So they updated it to a new, re a new pattern, new recoil pattern, which is more consistent in style with existing recoil patterns. So Havoc will have the same recoil but it's going to be a little bit more easier to control. Um, Mozambique. Now, this is actually really funny. I like this. Mozambique increased from three to four, dude. Mozambique might be an actual viable secondary if you find those hammer points now with four bullets per shot. I like this a lot. P2020 increased damage from 13 to 15. So base P2020 will be a little bit less useless, but they also decrease hammer point damage multiplier, um, which will make the hammer point P2020 damage the same. But it basically increases it like off drop because it was so bad when you just pick it up without a hammer point. So this is nice. And they increase the magazine size a bit. Um, Sentinel only requires one shield cell to charge if the player has gold armor. So if you, your teammate has a Sentinel, pass down the gold armor, it would help them out. Prowler. Now I'll, everyone who likes burst Prowler, I don't like burst Prowler. Everyone like yells at me when I say I don't like it and I think it's bad, but um, it's getting a recoil. A, it's getting reduced recoil when it's in burst mode, the Prowler. Um, and when it's in full auto mode, it's getting uh, added horizontal recoil to make it a little less of a beam. I'm fine with this. Um, Burst Prowler is also kind of in already insane up close. I'm curious how it's going to be like medium range now. Uh, we'll have to see, I guess. Quality of life. Supply drop weapons are now heirloom tier. This is actually kind of cool. I like that. To avoid confusion with fully kid weapons, which will remain gold. World's Edge received performance improvements, especially around the tree, the dome, skyhook, looking towards the center of the map. So this is really nice. So World's Edge will get more FPS, more frames per second now, hopefully on World's Edge. Alterations were made to the ring to prevent late zones from centering on unplayable terrain and reduce the pre predictability of the zone's pull. So um, they basically are making... There was a lot of rings where there would just be a huge mountain in the middle of the ring that you so people were just kind of like stuck and didn't know where to go so they fixed that but they did reduce the predictability of the zones pool and let me tell you this right now this adds rng to the game and i think a lot of high level ranked players a lot of professional players aren't gonna like this because what made predictable zones good was that it made it so teams that put in the time uh to really see all the zones and memorize these zones had the advantage but now it's just kind of like any team that just gets lucky from the zones pull wins and as that rng factor that i think a lot of people won't like so i think this was actually a bad change but um I, hopefully they realize that and put it back to more predictable zones which i think is better for high level comp play and high level professional play um 
bug fixes there's a lot of them man but there's a lot of bug fixes here uh if you want to go through all of them feel free to do so um i'm not going to go through all of them just because this video is already probably ridiculously long but yes that is the season six patch notes crazy man a lot of crazy stuff oh one last thing i almost missed uh with the crafting system here um yeah there is a big change that i don't know how this is going to play but this will literally allow respawn to just change the meta how they like um right here it says loot that is in the rotation on the crafting system so as you guys know when you open up this crafting thing there is a rotation of weekly um i think daily even hourly um loot that rotates and it says right here that loot that is in the rotation of the crafting system will not spawn on the ground so that means if the like they said here if the r301 and the anvil receiver are inside of this for however long say a week it's not going to be on the ground so the only way you can actually get it is by crafting it in here so if there's ever a weapon that's too op say like the charge rifle was when it first came out boom they can throw it in here it's not on the ground it will be a lot less than them in the game but also it will just diversify the meta a lot by constantly it will literally make it so there's constantly just like certain weapons that might be meta just won't be in the game unless you go to these crafting systems which is huge so yeah these crafting systems are going to play a huge role in the meta of uh of season six for sure but that's everything this video is going to be so long i already know it uh everyone who watched all the way through i appreciate you guys if you're hyped for season six make sure you go down below hit that like button subscribe to the channel leave a comment what you guys think this is all insane man i don't even know like this season six is going to be completely different it's going to be so refreshing and i'm so hyped to make content for this game and just play the game and grind it again but yeah, boys, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, I'll be having a new video very soon on season six. It is dropping um, early, early tomorrow for me. It's dropping actually today at 10 p.m. Pacific time. So for me, that's 1 a.m. Um, Eastern time. So um, yeah, I will be having a video up very late tonight. So get ready for that on season six. But yeah, that's it for today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for, thank you so much for watching. This has been Quake. Peace.